to Don't Mind the Golden Handcuffs Podcast or DMGH Podcast, a place for future and present attorneys or any young professional to find the motivation they need to further their minds, careers, and financial success. It's hard to make it out there when you came from nothing. We want to provide you with some help with that. Of course, a one-person team couldn't accomplish this. DMGH Podcast experienced guests will guide us on this road to career and financial success. First, let's take this law thing one step at a time with your host, Chris. What's up, guys? It's Chris from DMGH Podcast. Today's episode is regarding the bar, but don't be fearful. It's going to be a good episode, and we're going to have some great advice for you. Today we have with with us uh, Diane Chang. Diane, why don't you introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about your journey? Sure. Um, Well, it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, I graduated from law school in Los Angeles at Loyola Law School in 2017, so it's been two years, and took the July uh, 2017 bar exam, passed it uh, shortly thereafter, started working at a plaintiff's personal injury law firm, but I'm currently now uh, establishing my own solo practice, so that's been interesting. Um, challenging, scary, a number of things, but I'm really excited to, to move forward with it. Um, but, you know, the bar exam still feels like a pretty recent experience. <laughs> I'll sort of like look back on it with some wisdom, with some humor, um, and also, of course, a lot of empathy for the people who are currently yeah. going through that. So, um, I'm, and yeah, I'm happy to share any wisdom I may have gained through the process. Um, and, and share things that, you know, I, I may have done differently, um, yeah. had I, had I known. So, yeah, uh, I don't know. Yeah. Let so, me know what your thoughts are. So my first thought is, um, before going to law school, people always told me how difficult law school was and granted it is a very difficult process, but it wasn't as horrible as all these nightmare stories that you hear. Uh, it does the bar live up to its, its reputation? Um, yes and no. I would say, uh, I took the California bar, which has, you know, a very, very low pass rate, I would say, you know, on a nationwide scale. Um, but at the same time, I feel like I was fairly well prepared just through my law school experience. Um, and I had learned my best learning style while going through law school. So, you know, I I, I did kind of feel like I hit the ground running in that I didn't waste too much time focusing on learning methods that didn't prove to be very productive for me when I was in law school. Mm -hmm. Um, And, you know, uh, there's going to be a learning curve no matter what. Um, But I think that it was the last month of bar prep that I really had the momentum going and I was really like, okay, well, this is like make or break time. Um, this is what's working for me and this is how, how I'm going to move forward. Um, but everybody kind of has their own unique story. Um, I would say that for me, I was very concerned going into law school just as I'm sure most law students are, um, because yeah, we hear that law school sucks. It's so challenging. It's competitive, all these things. Mm-hmm. But when I graduated from law school, I realized that law school was probably some of the best years of my life. Um, and I've had some amazing years. <laughs> so, and, and the reason for that would be just the incredible experiences that you wouldn't have um, doing anything else. At, and the camaraderie that you can develop while in law school. Um, and, and that's something that you should take with you into the bar exam if or bar prep if that has helped you in law school. So for example, you know, if, if study groups really helped you while you were in law school, study for final exams and things like that, then don't shy away from developing a um, study group for bar prep. Um, If private uh, alone time helped you study better, well then, you know, take that knowledge and apply it to bar prep. So, and, and, I, and I think that that is reflected 
um, in the way that, it, you know, for example, bar takers who did not go to an ABA uh, accredited law school or who did not go to law school, their pass rates are, are much lower yeah. than the people who did. Um, and, and I think that a large part of that is because we had law school to, to prepare and to figure out how to conquer these types of exams with time constraints, with just the sheer, you know, amount of information that we have to pack into our brains in a short period of time. Mm-hmm. Um, throughout the law school process, we're learning how we can do this and do it uh, effectively. Um, and other people who haven't had that opportunity to experience this in law school, they're kind of starting from, you know, a blank slate when going into bar prep, and that can be a huge disadvantage. Yeah. So, um, I, I would say definitely think about the types of methods that were helpful to you as a law student and really go with that for the bar prep Mm -hmm. um, and try not to overthink it. I think when you see it as this huge obstacle that, you know, causes tons of people to fail, that's, that's not a very helpful mentality. Yeah. Um, Whereas if you come from it from the perspective of, oh, my God, I get to, like, basically put together all the knowledge that I learned while in law school and retrieve whatever it is that, you know, maybe you took um, you know, criminal law years ago or, you know, civil procedure a while ago and you've forgotten these things. Well, it gives you an opportunity to really uh, drill into your mind and, and go back and remember what you learned. Yeah. Um and, and that's, that's an empowering process. So I think that when you see it from the perspective of learning, um, it, it, you, you see it as a privilege, not mm. so much like this horrible, horrible experience that you're putting yourself through, you know? Yeah. Um, and how did you approach subjects that you may have not studied in school? Or did you take all the classes that were required for the bar? Or not required? I, Yeah, so I definitely didn't take all the bar courses that were being tested. So, for example, I think it was like trusts and wills I hadn't taken. Um, And that can be a little bit tricky. Um, I I would say, you know, whatever courses that are a little bit harder for you, um, you know, listen to the lectures, whichever bar prep course you choose to take. Um, and then, you know, get the outlines. You may want to see whether you have classmates who did take the course mm-hmm. and see whether you can, um, you know, borrow their outlines and really um, just try to try to start from very simple concepts and then allow yourself to develop, you know, a, a greater understanding from there. Um, yeah. Then you also have to realize, like, you cannot stress yourself out too much about maybe areas of law that just confuse the heck out of you. You don't want to waste too much time on any particular subject because I don't know how the New York bar is or, or, you know, bar exams are in other states. But um, in California, we only have, you know, a handful of essays, a handful of subjects that are covered. And what if you study a ton on one subject? to gain like a very, you know, surface level understanding of it. And then it's not tested, you know? Yeah. So it, it, the bar exam, you kind of have to be like a jack of all trades <laughs> and yeah. you don't have to be a serious master of any one particular subject, but you have to have, you know, a, a decent understanding of each one. And then don't freak out if you feel like there's one particular subject that you don't um feel very, very confident about because even if you end up, you know, scoring poorly on one particular subject, if you do well on the rest of the subjects, that's not going to make or break your, your Mm -hmm. exam score, you know? So, um, you have to think about it from a perspective of not being a perfectionist. And this is actually kind of hard for people who maybe graduated top 5%, top 10% of their class in law school. They may end up, you know, just killing themselves over minute details that 
don't even really matter. Or, Mm -hmm. you know, they might be taking the MBE and there's one multiple choice question that they're like, ah, I just can't decide between A and B, you know. But when you're in the exam environment, just pick one, you know, flip a coin in your head and move (laughs) on. Because you don't want that perfectionism to cause you to, you know, miss a bunch of other questions. Yeah. And did you feel anxious during the actual test? Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. So how did you resolve that? (laughs) So I took my exam in Ontario and, um, it's, it's at, it was at a convention center that is huge. Like this is a massive room and there are literally thousands of test takers in one room and there's just tables lined out. Um, and it really feels like a factory of just like <laughs> test takers and it's, it's a high stress environment. Um, and, and everything makes sounds and things like that, but I never practiced for the bar exam, um, with, um, like earplugs in or anything like that. So mm-hmm. while I did borrow some from someone who had extras, I decided, you know, I'm just going to keep them on the side, yeah. but if it's, if there's nothing too, too distracting, I'm just going to go with how I practice, you know, for the last two months. Um, and, and I did not end up using um, earplugs. And what I realized was, you know, people um, were, were getting up, walking to the restroom in, the, in that room. And someone, a test taker, maybe like two chairs down from me, she said, oh, my God, did you hear the people who are like vomiting in the bathroom? And I was like, wow. what? And I was like, no, I didn't. <laughs> I was close to the bathroom, but the restroom. But I was just so in the zone yeah. that everything just kind of blurred around me. Um, and that's kind of how you have to be. You kind of have to practice being in the zone. And um, the way I would practice the exam at home is that I would allow myself to have, you know, hear distracting noises. Um, and, and I knew that that would be reflective of the actual test taking environment. Mm-hmm. Um, and ultimately, you know, you're just going to have to practice being in the zone and, and not allowing things around you to influence how you feel and know that, you know, once, once you take one section, it's not, it's not done. You know, you can have another section to take. So, you know, if you finish one section and there's somebody sitting behind you or next to you saying, Oh my God, that was so easy. And then you're thinking to yourself, (laughs) Oh my God, that was not easy. (laughs) You know, like, don't let that stress you out. That's the worst type of person, too. The person that's so confident they need to verbally let everyone around them know. That's the worst person ever. And I've actually, I had that experience. And and I know for a fact that person failed multiple times. So, so it it, it means nothing. Like, overconfidence or feeling that a question was easy means nothing. Because it could mean that they just totally missed the point, you know. So, um, don't let outside influences decrease your level of confidence. Just be in the yeah. zone. Um, you know, what was it the hardest was, part for you? Um, I always struggled the most with the MBE exam, and that's the multiple choice. Um, other people like just don't think that that's such a big deal, but they but they really struggle with the essays. Essays have never really been you know as difficult for me. The MBE section, I will say, was really frustrating because, and it nearly put me in a panic, but I was looking at my um, Scantron and looking at my my test-taking booklet, and I realized that I had skipped one question on the test-taking booklet and had messed up filling in my answer. I did it like two times during law school. Yeah, so two rows were were incorrectly bubbled in, oh, man. and I was like, "Oh my god!" And I had to like flip through the booklet several several pages, like, "Where did, where did I go wrong? Where did I go wrong?" And here I'm I'm panicking because already I need all the time I can get to finish the yeah. MBE. Somehow I've practiced, and I'm thinking in my head like, "Okay, that's it. I failed. I failed. <laughs> I failed right now." <laughs> you know? um, but eventually I found where I had gone wrong and where I had missed or skipped over a question and I quickly answered it and just erased, um, refilled in everything really quickly. 
calmed myself down. I had to really, really, you know, like breathe deep, calm down and finish the exam. Um, and, and yeah, it caused me to have to, you know, rush through the last couple of questions, but yeah. ultimately like, don't let something like that cause you to give up. Just like, keep going. Yeah. So yeah. try to maintain your, your <laughs> wish ups and just, um, yeah, don't like, don't give yeah. up. You know? And if, and when it comes to the essays, if there's a particular question that, you know, you really are, are, are not sure how to proceed, well, proceed the best you can. Don't spend too much time on it and move on. And then maybe after you've moved on, like something comes to you and you'll have um, more information yeah. to, to, to put in later on. Um, so, so I would say for essays, it's certainly um, time management is a big deal. Definitely have a, a good watch that works well um, and be looking at what time it is that you started each particular essay so that you know how much time um, you have to, to finish. So yeah. for California bar exam, there may be like, I forget how many essays there were, it was like four, but you know, you, you have a start time and an end time. You have to be done with all four essays by then. Um, so, but you're, pra when you're practicing, you know that, oh, I'm going to give myself, you know, I don't know, uh, 40 minutes per essay or something mm -hmm. like that. You have to time it yourself. So what I would do, um, in my booklet, every time I moved on to the next essay, I would look at my watch right down at the top of the page, like what time I started. So I would know how much time I have to work on that particular question or essay um, and then move on and then do the same thing. Um, because if you're not managing your time, you can really get screwed over. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Did you take um, a bar prep course? And if so, were you able to finish the whole prep? And just um, so everyone out there knows, I, I'm not sponsored by any bar prep yeah. uh, place. And I'm sure Diane isn't either. Um, so that being said, um, did you take a bar prep course, a course and did you finish the whole entire program? I, I did take one. I took Barbary. Um, I studied with a friend who actually was taking another, another program. And, um, I think Barbary may have been the most popular one based on, you know, just my classmates, but plenty of other people passed taking other programs, um, I was not very disciplined, and I don't think that I should be um, <laughs> a model bar prep student in that regard. I have finished like 60% of the assignment. All right, so um, everyone out there, um, Diane personally guarantees that if you do finish 60%, you will pass the bar. <laughs> no, that is not a disclaim. No, so... <laughs> I, you know, most of my friends uh, that are very studious people, they they probably finish like 90 to, to 200 percent of the program. Mm -hmm. um, and I knew before going into the bar exam that I would feel so much more confident had I actually, you know, done a little bit more. So I think even just for, you know, personal feelings of confidence, like don't be so behind, you know. Yeah you know, do more of the assignments and then you'll boost your confidence. And that in and of itself is huge. Um, because at the end of the day, you can know everything, but if you're freaking out on the day of the exam, you may very well fail. So, and that, and so, you know, part of it, finishing that program could very well be just boosting your confidence in how much yeah. you know material. Um, yeah. And I was not very confident going into it. But I got lucky, um, and I, you know, once I got to the uh, test-taking um, location, Ontario, a couple of my friends, you know, we, we all stayed in, like, local hotels, um, and we just kind of bounced information off of each other. I am all for studying up until the very last moment. <laughs> um, I, I was looking at flashcards and actually writing flashcards in my hotel <laughs> Um, and if it makes you feel better to do that, just to boost your confidence or whatever, then go ahead and do it. But if you feel confident and you feel like there's nothing you could possibly learn in that short amount of time, then don't do it and sit out and 
meditate or like, you know, hang out with your friends and don't talk about the bar exam. Um, but, uh, something else that I will say, I know that a lot of people had problems with was just even falling asleep the night before the exam. So we were all in our hotel room. Um, and it's, 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 there's a lot of anxiety around test day. So it's maybe very difficult to fall asleep the night before. Um, and I know a lot of us were probably taking the exam that first day with maybe two or three hours of sleep. So we were yeah. exhausted, but, you know, so, I mean, if there's any kind of like whatever you may take over the counter or whatever to calm anxiety, melatonin, whatever it may be yeah. that you take um, either during law school or whatever that helps us uh, sleep, you know, um, listening to calming music, whatever it may be, <laughs> make sure that you have that prepared with you. Um, the day before the exam, um, and just try to stay as comfortable as possible. But again, for me personally, I was actually, you know, um, talking to friends and making flashcards even the night before the exam, and yeah. looking at the flashcards during breakfast the next morning, yeah. right before the exam. So, you know, everyone has different styles, um, and everyone learns differently. So even though I may not have finished much of the actual Barbary program, I wouldn't recommend that. Of course. Um, <laughs> I would certainly recommend doing as much as you possibly can without being feeling overwhelmed or overworked, you yeah. know. Um, definitely take days of rest, um, you know. Maybe uh, I, I had heard of people who had study groups and like every Friday night, the study group would reward themselves with like a happy hour or something like that. Mm -hmm. And then they would kind of repeat the process again the next week um, or study, you know, even the, start studying again the next morning. So whatever you decide to do, make sure you don't overwork yourself because even though the bar prep period is pretty short, it is still kind of like a marathon, you know, you, you don't want to burn yourself out too early on. And, um, but also you don't want to procrastinate until the very last moment either. Um, I know that some people do do that. I probably really got into the, the groove of studying when I had one month left, but that's just, that's yeah. always been my kind of style. Yeah. You know, I learn better under pressure. Um, but whatever happens to be your learning style, you know, tap into that and, mm -hmm. and tap into whatever your law school experience was that taught you, oh, when, when was it that time that I got a bad grade? Oh, it's because I did this. When yeah. did I get a good grade? Oh, it's because I did this. Personally, um, I do really well with flashcards and mnemonics, and that probably saved, saved me, you know, because you have so many rules you're trying to memorize that mnemonics really come in handy. And I made my mnemonics as funny as I possibly could. And I'm like sitting there remembering it during the exam, like giggling to myself. And it's like, and that just kind of like lightens the mood, even if it's just in your own head, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I try to do things to make it lighthearted and not too serious um, whenever I can. Mm -hmm. um, and again, really try to view this this entire process as a privilege. You know, you're yeah. learning so much. And truly, this is a unique period in your life when you only have one singular goal, for the most part. I mean, mm -hmm. you could still be working on the side or something like that. But yeah. for the most part, you and all of your law school classmates have like one major goal in mind. And that will last for, I don't know, two months that you're prepping. Yeah. And beyond that, once you guys become lawyers, you have to juggle a million things, you know, and now you're in the real world. And you will look back on this period of time like, man, that, you know, it sucks. <laughs> At the same time, I kind of miss it, you know, so. I've heard that before. <laughs> yeah. And, 
And I, and I've talked to other attorneys when I was in bar prep and they were saying like, I kind of missed that period of time where I just felt like I was learning so much <laughs> and it's for my, for my knowledge and nobody's lives depended on it, you know? <laughs> so, so it is a unique period of time and you have to really try to enjoy it as much as you can. I need, I know that that sounds kind of annoying to hear, but, yeah. um, I think you will look back on it with sort of like a bittersweet nostalgia and just remember this time when, you know, you had that one goal and you had one purpose and, um, and, and then, you know, your law school classmates had the same, same goal, same purpose, and you guys could bond over it. You know? yeah. So, so um, just try not to, take it too seriously. And that advice really bothered me when I was studying for the bar because I had, you know, attorneys tell me, Oh, it's really not as hard as you think it is. And I wanted to be like, no, 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 no. Like <laughs> after test results don't, don't <laughs> say that message unless I'm really dumb or something. But the thing is like, it sometimes it takes a while to really, um, shift. So don't let that get you down. You know, you may be taking practice exams and your, your scores are like fail scores. And you're like, Oh God, like I, if I were to take the bar exam tomorrow, I would totally fail, but it could take a month or even more than a month for it to just like click in your head. And all of a sudden things start flowing a little bit better. So, you know, I know that the Barbary course, they would have like a practice, like as essay test all day um, on my law school campus. Um, and then you would you'd kind of like grade your own exam at the end, but it was to mimic yeah. the actual exam environment. And I scored terribly on those. And, you know, it was a bit of a downer, but I ended up passing the actual thing. So I think for me, it may have just taken a little bit longer for it to click. Mm -hmm. And I, I ended up focusing on the MBE, which was my you know, challenging area, looking over the reasons why, you know, I didn't get that question right. And really just trying to learn from my errors. Um, and that helped, you know, that helped things kind of click for me. Yeah. And so, you know, in the end, it ended up being fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I just wanted uh, uh, to thank you for, for talking with me today. Uh, and to anyone out there, I think the two takeaways is, uh, one, if you don't pass, you, you won't become a lawyer. I think that's a, you know, a takeaway. Uh, and the second, uh, what was the second one? Um, don't take yourself too seriously and kind of anything you do, you know, always kind of go with it lighthearted and because being too stressed will never help anyone out. Um, so yeah, I wanted to thank you obviously for coming on the show and, uh, to everyone out there, I've, a lot of you guys are taking the bar. Uh, best of luck, and I'll see you guys in two months. Um, but until then, um, don't forget Diane's personal guarantee. Um, they could not pass the bar. <laughs> no, but of course, uh, thanks for being on the show. And anytime you need anything, let me know, and um, you're always welcome back. All right. Thank you very much. All right. Talk to you soon.